characters, but they do not appear on the PC. And I've done a little bit of debugging, and there isn't any serial characters transmitted out of the serial port. Okay, so um, these are the schematics for the Acorn A3010. Um, there is a bad copy out on the internet. This is a nice clean PDF. The the bad copy has um, has been scanned from a uh, A3 page, so it's not very clear. But here we can see the serial interface um, and this is the um, this is the D9 connector on the back of the of the machine, and pin three is the transmit, and that comes from this um, uh, buffer driver gate, which is in IC19, and in fact, the way that this schematic is drawn, IC19 has been has been broken out into uh, a number of different parts. So there's a gate here, a gate here, a gate here, and um, these are driven via various pins off IC24. And uh, IC24 is um, it has a, a it drives a number of um, peripherals in the machine and uh, now this chip is actually a uh, MC1488 which um, is a fairly standard quad driver um, there's a couple of manufacturers of it and uh, so that's three of the IC19 has one two three there and the fourth is over here written as spares and you would notice that this is the only place where you'll find where the power rails are defined so here is the pins 1 and 4 which is the power rails for minus 12 and plus 12 so this chip is um, the uh, serial transmit buffer chip and we know that the receiver is working and that's on IC23 mainly receive now I've measured the output on pin 3 and there's um, nearly zero volts output and now I've actually measured the uh, what's going being driven into this um, gate and there is some pulses when I when I press a key on the acorn there is some some pulses um, trying to toggle the input of this um, driver. So there's something uh, at issue with this serial driver chip. And what's interesting is if we go to this page of the schematic, this has the power supplies. So here's the mains input, uh, it goes through a transformer and there's um, various circuitry here to, to power the 5 volt rail but down here is the plus and minus 12 volt rails which are unregulated so there's 9 volt tappings from the transformer, it goes through two fuses, a uh, bridge rectifier and some capacitors for smoothing and then there's plus or minus 12, 12 volt rails and I've looked through these schematics and I can't find anywhere else where the plus or minus 12 volt rails are used. Uh, so these rails only seem to be used for this uh, RS-232 output driver to give us... Uh, RS-232 has um, high voltage or, or plus or minus tw 12 volt high and low. Um, as opposed to 5 volts. So um, let's go and measure this power supply section. Um, we're looking for fuse 2 and 3. Okay, so here, here we are. 
is FS2 and FS3. These are the two fuses that we saw in the schematic. It then goes off to the rectification diodes here and then there's some smoothing capacitors and they've also provided some test points 12 uh, minus 12 volts unregulated and plus 12 volts unregulated and this is reference to 0 volts uh, so let's put this on continuity mode and that's working Okay, let's check this fuse. No, that's open circuit. And check this fuse. That's also open circuit. So I guess the both the positive and negative 12 volt rails um, have caused these fuses to open. So as I say, the only thing that is on these rails is the uh, RS-232 driver, which is over here. This is IC19. In fact, what I thought I'd do here is I'd connect a power supply up to the plus 12 volt rail, and I've set it for about 6 volts and it's only at 2 milliamps current limit so this driver only takes a very small amount of current so I'm gonna see if I can switch this on and um, it won't exceed or it won't exceed the current limit I imagine that it'll probably go into current limit as it charges up these um, capacitors so let's give that a go and there we go so the voltage climbed up as the smoothing capacitors charged up and um, I think one of these electrolytics is also there's another smoothing electrolytic somewhere but the plus rail is, is now on so I'll try the same for the negative rail so that's positive on 0 volts, negative on minus 12 because we need to apply a negative voltage and there you go so we the current limit is on and um, it's not the voltage isn't climbing at all so in fact if we in try and increase yeah, there's 10 milliamps. It's clearly a short circuit on the. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to lift the um, power pins away from the pads on this and see if we can apply power to the negative and positive rails, i.e. hopefully we've removed the short circuit. I don't know if you can see that there, but I've... Just been able to lift the pins away from the pads. So now, if we apply the negative 12 volts, yep, it doesn't go into current limit. And we apply positive voltage. That doesn't go into current limit either, so certainly that driver has gone short circuit. So I'm going to lift this off and uh, we'll see if we can put a new one on. So one way of removing these, if you don't have the a hot air tool, you can just heat up all the pins by flooding it with solder and just quickly lift uh, one side with a knife and then you can hold onto the IC and remove from the other side. Right, well I've installed the new um, quad driver but I still seem to have excessive current draw on the minus 12 volt rail. Um, 
So I'm going to take the shield plate off and have a look at the underside of the uh, main board and see what there is under there. Okay, so a little update video on this. I've had to dig around a lot on the mine, so I've still got a sh short circuit. If I apply power to minus 12 volts, okay, and turn on the power supply. Ah, uh, short circuit disappeared. Now if I wiggle this. <laughs> Would you believe? It's cured now. I've had to do a lot of digging. I'm taking out these diodes. Taking out these capacitors. Taking off capacitors here, lifted up the legs on the IC. Somewhere on this board, there is a short between minus 12 volts and zero, which seems to be quite intermittent. Okay, so, so I can see what the problem is now. The These two tracks here are plus and minus 12 volt tracks. They go up. In between the modulator and this heatsink, and if you can see clearly down there, part of the circuit board has got some kind of contamination, and the tracks are burnt away. very dirty down there. So these two tracks go up to this point on the circuit board and then they go on the reverse up to the serial driver. So these this power rail does just just power the the rate the uh, serial driver. So what we can do, I think, is cut these tracks here somewhere, and then run some cables that come over to the serial to remove this bad section. In fact, I've put I've put a small test probe down there, and that whole PCB area seems to be conductive with the minus 12 volt rail. So clearly, something has happened down there. And indeed, if you look. way you might be able to see there are some of the tracks sticking up and touching the metal can of the modulator which is probably connected to null volt. Okay. okay, so on the plus and minus 12 volt section, um, I've put the capacitors back in um, and I've cut the tracks and here are some wires that go off. It's not particularly tidy. And then they go up to the serial driver and also where the serial driver is the power tracks cut in the back as well so why I haven't repaired the tracks that go underneath here 
is because this is riveted to the board um, so you can see there you would have to drill it out um, which I just can't face doing I'd much rather just cut the tracks here and here where they're visible and, and put them in and so we'll uh, I need to put the put in some new fuses and we'll see how we get on okay so this seems, seems to be up and running I can start connector and uh, put this into chat mode and on the PC if I put in hello there isn't any characters appear on the PC and here it appears on the chat and more importantly if I type a message on the acorn I am here these characters have appeared on the PC so I think we can say we have fixed the serial port 